In today's show, we look ahead to Sunday, how we can stream in players to win our weekly matchup. That's key, isn't it? Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. First time users can receive a 100% Instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's pricepicks.com, the promo code locked on. All right, we're going to look at Sunday. It's only three games on. So good luck in getting um, good luck in getting players in. And there's going to be a lot of repetition through all the categories. There are some real key standout stream names for Sunday, for points leagues and for category leagues. And we've got to be really attuned to that as to which guys we are actually adding and uh, and how we're going to benefit our matchup. So let's start with points leagues. Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Yahoo points leagues. Let's look. You, you saw the bloke's picture on the thumbnail of this video, on the thumbnail for the, the album cover for this audio podcast. It's Daniel Gafford, right? He is the guy, I think. I think that... I just did a show on week 12 saying, hey, the Wizards only have two games. That's not great, right? And it isn't because they're the only team that's that's playing two games. But Gafford's done enough to be a great stream for Sunday and a hold through next week's two games. I don't know that it's going to work out. I don't know that Gafford's going to continue to start next to Porzingis. But I don't care at the, at the moment. I think you've got to grab him. I've been saying that for about a week, I think. And yeah, more, more and more I look at it, I go, yes, add him. And tomorrow, great stream. Yes, it's only two games next week. You take a bit of a hit, but he's a great option for tomorrow. On the flip side of that, we'll talk about this later, but Malik Monk, wasn't a great game for Monk yesterday, but they've got three games in the next four nights. They play Sunday. It's good value for Monk. Like, try him out. Derek White's a good streamer for Yahoo Points. He's getting the minutes over Brogdon, who's sick anyway. He's getting 30 minutes a night. He's available. Go. The Celtics have three quality games next week. The Shark... Chris Brown, he is a stream as well. There are um, back-to-backs here for the Nuggets on Sunday, Monday, and then Thursday, Friday, I think it is. So you're going to have Murray sitting some games, so Brown gets a boost there. You've got Monte Morris with Bradley Beal, and his status still um, unknown. He's currently questionable for tomorrow's action, and that really does help Morris quite a bit. Again, the same problem with Gafford is they only have two games this week. I think I'd prefer Gafford over Morris long-term. But yeah, there's value here. Bones Highland and KCP. You're going to have a Murray sit at some point in the next... Maybe he sits Sunday. I don't think he does. Maybe he does. And Bones and KCP have got solid roles. They can produce numbers. And with six teams only playing tomorrow, there's value in those guys. And then Drew Holiday and Chris Milton are out for the Bucks. So Javon Carter played 30 minutes last game. No guarantee he does that again. But there is the opportunity for him to do that. So he becomes somewhat of a Yahoo point stream. These guys are all available in over 40% of Yahoo Leagues. On ESPN Points Leagues, a lot of the same names appear. These guys are all available in over 70% of ESPN Leagues. They're available in over 70%. We've got Gafford, we've got Monk, Brucey Brown, Bones Highland, KCP, Javon Carter, all names I mentioned. Tyus Jones, an interesting one. He doesn't do huge amounts some nights when Jar plays, but it is a back-to-back. Maybe the Grizzlies go a little bit easier on the starters on Sunday. Maybe Tyus pushes up to 23 or 24. Maybe Jar sits it. I doubt it. But Tyus is interesting. And Grayson Allen, same as Javon Carter. No Middleton. No um, Drew Holiday. So Grayson, theoretically, should get some shots. Now he's been pretty rough. I guess you could throw Joe Ingles in this mix as well because his last game was very impressive. And maybe he takes some playing time away from some of these guys. But there is some opportunity there with the Bucks playing. We should just talk about who he's playing. Kings, Grizzlies play. Celtics, Nuggets play. And Wizards Bucks. These six teams that play um, 
to play their games on whatever that day is. On Sunday, NFL Week 17 day. Maybe that's why they put 13, uh, only three games on while well, the NFL goes for their really big week of the season. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You put your entry in, you don't have to put it in with a salary cap. You don't have to go up against thousands of people. It's just you against the player projections. You might have Derek White, and they might say, we think Derek White, nine and a half points. You go, I think you might go more than that if Brogdon's out. And you put that in. And then you look Grant Williams over under more or less than four and a half rebounds. I'm making these numbers up, but that might be there. You go, I think Grant might push over that. And you put that into entry. You can do two to six of those. And you can win up to 25 times your entry fee. You can do that in 30 US states, over 30 US states, in Canada. And your withdrawals are safe and fast. And your entries take under 60 seconds. It's not just the NBA. You can do NFL, college basketball, college football, soccer, NASCAR, boxing, MMA, cricket, disc golf, all the big ones. All over at pricepicks.com. So download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match with up to $100 with promo code LOCKEDON. If you deposit $100, Price Picks gives you $100. If you deposit $51, they will give you $51. Don't forget to enter the promo code LOCKEDON at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Let's look at category leagues now. How we're streaming in here. Um, again, a lot of repetition with only six games on, or sorry, six teams playing three games on. So what are we streaming into the points category? Malik Monk, yes, there's boom or bust potential, but that's the case with so many of these guys, especially the first two, Malik Monk and the five-minute man, Bones Highland. The opportunity could be there. They could have 20. They could also score nine points on 20% shooting. But they are they do have, out of all those guys on that list, maybe save Rui Hachimura, these are the guys with 20, 25-point upside. And sometimes when you're desperate in that category, like if you are desperate in the points category in a category league, you need to go big. Like who can hit high? But if you're trying to protect that category, well, I'm just marginally up, I need some points, you want to go safe. I think KCP is safe. Derek White is safe. 10, 12, 13 points, not much. Dan Gafford gets you around that mark as well. And then they don't have as high an upside. Monte Morris, if Beal is out, his value rises up a little bit here. And then Bruce Brown's probably a more safe play than a high upside play. But again, a lot of these similar names that are all available in over 40% of Yahoo leagues, you can probably find one of those players, two of those players to stream in and help you with the points category. The three-pointers, a lot of these guys are the same. It's Bones Highland, it's Malik Monk, it's KCP. They all have four three-pointer upside, which is great. Pat Connaughton, he doesn't do much else apart from shoot threes, but he shoots them. Grayson Allen, Joe Ingles, three bucks guys. Pick out who it's going to be. They could all easily hit two triples apiece. Easily. We saw Ingles have a really big game yesterday. Derek White and Grant Williams. You, As we talk about a lot, and I hope this idea is really seeping into your heads at the moment when we get to next season, draft season, you can find threes everywhere. Like they are... So easy to find off the waiver wire. Yes, finding them with high contributions in other categories and high efficiency, yeah, that, that gives a boost to the, the Steph Currys at the top of your draft. But when you're talking end of roster stuff, like a three-pointer just isn't worth that much because there's so many of these guys who can just bring them off the waiver wire, much more so than basically any other category. Rebounds. Well, it's the big fella in Washington. It's Dan Gafford. Like, this is an easy one. He is... I think he's a must-stream player, honestly, for Sunday. I love it for rebounds there. And then after that, it gets a little rough. Like, it's a lot of wing power 40 type players. Brandon Clark, he might play 16 minutes. He still might get six boards, but is there double-digit upside rebounds there? Probably not. In fact, I don't know if anyone's got double-digit rebound upside, apart from Gaff. Bruce Brown gets rebounds. Brandon Clark, Denny Avdia, especially if Beal is out, he might be a double-digit rebound player. Hachimura can be a five to six rebound guy. Um, Paddy Connaughton, that's where we're getting rough. Like, it's five, four to five. Grant Williams is not a great rebounder, but he does play a big position. And then we get down to Monte Morris, who's been rebounding pretty well. And if Beal is out, his value does improve there. If we look at assists, Jesus Christ, it's not great, but it's also not the worst state of stream assists. Sometimes we'll have six games on a Sunday, and this is no one to add. These guys, there is all, every one of these players has six assist upside, which is not something you find that often. Monte Morris is the number one here, and if Beal is out, he shoots right up, right? He's an easy assist stream. Tyus Jones, we don't know about if Jar's playing. I assume he's playing. Um, but Jones always gets some assists. Malik Monk can drop six or seven. Derek White can drop five to six. 
Bruce Brown, Javon Carter, especially with Drew out, he could have five or six very easily. Jingle and Joe Ingles, what are you, 10 last game with Drew and Middleton out? That's a great assist stream. And he gets steals and he hits threes. And then there is the five-minute man, Bones Highland, who you know is going to run that second unit as their point guard. And there's four to five assists coming out of him more than likely. Steals. I like the steals options. KCP, great steals guy, three steals upside. Javon Carter, four steals upside, I would say. Um, D'Lon Wright, five steal upside. Like They are elite steals options. If you're looking for steals, they are elite. Derek White, really good steals guy. So those top four, I love them as assist streamers. Oh, sorry, as steal streamers. Grant Williams can get you some. Tyus Jones can get some. Brucey Brown's not a bad steals guy. And Pat Connaughton. So does, there is a drop-off after Derek White on that list, but they are still solid options. With blocks, it really is Gafford and that's it. Right? These other guys might get you one block. Gafford might get you six. So if you want blocks, it has to be Gafford. You might find some other random guys. like Derek White might get you one or two. Clark might get one. Bruce Brown might get one. Javon Carter's a good blocking guard. Denny Avdia might get one. Rashawn Holmes is playing a little bit better now. He might get you one. And then you get down to like Bones Highland just through minutes alone. But like nothing's great there. It's Gafford, right? If you want blocks, it's Gafford. Blocks are very, very hard to come across in big volume off the waiver wire. And that's why Gafford is so valuable here. Today's episode is also brought to you by Built Bar. It's the new year. Well, it is here and it's going to be for you too. Are you looking to lose weight, get fit, be healthier? Built Bar is a great healthy treat. It's low in calories, it's low in fat, it's low in sugar, but it is high in protein. So if you are looking to build muscle mass and cut down on some weight, Built Bar might be that option you're looking for. We all know that protein is important, but sometimes it just tastes gross. Like, no one wants to eat a, uh, a protein bar that tastes like crap. You want to eat something that tastes delicious and it feels like you're having a treat, but in fact, you're doing something healthy. Unbelievably good flavors. Churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, my favorite, cookies and cream. And they chuck out new limited edition ones all the time. I've been telling you though for years, go to built.com, right? Go to built.com. We know it. Go to built.com. I've said it so many times, but you know what? You don't have to do that anymore because you can go to Walmart or you can go to Sam's Club and they're there. At Walmart, you go to the pharmacy section, you get a box of built bars, a four bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate or coconut puffs. You go to Sam's Club and they've got a 13 bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later. Built Bar is built different. It's got a field goal percentage streaming. Honestly, in my projections for tomorrow, there are five players who project to be a positive influence in that category. Five players. Dan Gafford, Brandon Clark, Rashawn Holmes. Though In order. Right, those first two easy ones. Rashawn Holmes, the more minutes he gets, the better option he is. Grant Williams, usually a pretty good shooter, and then Bruce Brown. And that's it. I don't project anyone else to be a positive influence in field goal percentage tomorrow. So it's those five players. For free throw percentage, there's more of them. Malik Monk, Derek White, Grayson Allen, Bones Highland, Javon Carter, Monte Morris, DeLon Wright, and Contavious Caldwell Pope. I've mentioned all of those names already, but they also help you in free throw percentage. You have Monk with points and threes and assists. White with points and threes and steals and blocks and assists. Highland with points and threes and assists. And Grayson Allen with threes. And Javon Carter with steals and assists. And Monte Morris with rebounds and assists and points and threes. And DeLon Wright with steals and assists. And KCP with... Points and threes and steals and free throw percentage. Lots of good options there. A lot of these guys are four to five category positives for streaming it on Sunday. And that's great. All right. So be aware of who you're streaming. Watch how many ads you got. Watch who you drop. Is it that important to get one extra category this week to lose out on better players moving forward? Consider that. Now let's look at the next four days. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. There are two quality days there. And two high volume days. Monday's an 11 game day. Wednesday's a 12 game day. So we're looking at Sunday as a good low volume and Tuesday as a good low volume. In fact, but both of those days only have three games on. So our options are limited. But there are there are players, and there are a lot of names that we've already talked about, of course, because they play Sunday. The Wizards only have two games next week. They only have two games. But Dan Gafford, Denny Avdia. Delon Wright, throw Rui Hachimura in there as well. They play Sunday, they play Tuesday. It's great. Yes, it is only two games. And like Delon and Avdia and Monte Morris probably aren't going to be must-hold players through it all. But add them tomorrow, use them again Tuesday, and you've got yourself a really nice start to the week. Malik Monk, two low-volume days. 
Sunday, Tuesday. They also have the Kings also have three games in four nights. The Celtics, they only play three games next week, but all of them are quality games. So Derek White's an option for you. Grant Williams is an option for you. And then there are the Bucks, Grayson Allen with two games as well, two quality games. So we've got Gafford, Monk, Derek White, Monte Morris, Grayson Allen, Grant Williams, Denny Avdia, and DeLon Wright all play two games on low volume days in the next four days as good stream options. If we just look at the next four days in totality, Tom Bryant, still a must roster player. He has two games, one's on a high volume day, but he's, avail- he's still available in 40% of leagues. I don't know what we're waiting for. Add him. Walker Kessler's only got one game in the next four days. I do not care. He's a must roster player. The Jazz play four quality games next week. You have to have Walker Kessler and he is available. A great, doesn't play Sunday, but a great ad for next week and a great ad for the next four days. Like he'll start. Well, not the four, is it one game in the next four days? It's not great, but he starts on that Tuesday. DiVincenzo's got two games in the next four days, but I think he's startable in both of them. And then you get to the guys whose value is a little bit boosted up just through the volume of their games. And that's Monk with three games and Grayson Allen with three games. And you could sub Grayson Allen for Javon Carter or even Joe Ingles, although I don't think Ingles will play the back-to-back. The Bucks and the Kings have three and four nights. So Malik Monk, Grayson Allen, Keegan Murray, Rashawn Holmes, like the value of those guys improves. Naz Reed's got two games over the next four nights. We don't know about Anderson or Gobert. We know Towns is out, but he's great. Gafford, again, with the two games in the, in the next four days. Um, he's going to be a start, I think, in both of those. And quickly with two games in four nights, um, yeah, useful enough for you to add and roll until we see what happens with RJ Barrett. And that... We'll do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you are here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave those comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.